There were different times where he would quote David or even mention Jonah. But when he talks about marriage, he doesn't just go to Abraham and say, well, this is what Abraham did, or this is what Isaac or Jacob did. He doesn't go back to any of those. He says, what was it like in the very beginning? How did God intend marriage to be? And he goes to Genesis. Isn't that good? So God's plan. Now, when, we're, when we look at this, when the Bible warns us over and over again, don't be conformed to this world. Don't copy what the world and what's happening. And I've actually had pastors that, well, I maybe former pastors now, but that have said, well, Rolf, you're on the wrong side of this issue because society is going the direction of okay homosexual marriage, and the church needs to be on the quote unquote right side of this issue. Mm. Well, it's, it's never right to be wrong. Amen. Remember, right? I mean, to say that, well, let's just follow our culture, we're, we're, we're making a huge mistake. Amen. The Bible does teach us, don't follow the behavior and customs of this world, but let the God transform you. And I like Philip's translation where it says, don't let the world squeeze you into its mold. Mm -hmm. And the world tells us different things. I mean, about gay marriage, premarital sex. The world tells us it's okay as long as you love each other. It's okay as long as you're going to get married. It's okay as long as you stay committed. It's okay as long as it's safe sex. I mean, the world tells you all these things. Yet, the Bible says it's still wrong. Right. It's still wrong. Now, somebody says, yeah, but it's wrong, but God forgives, right? Amen. Okay, God forgives. But let's say I was angry with, let's say, Dylan. Dylan and I got into a big argument. And somehow, I punched him in the face. <laughs> He irritated me, and he wouldn't do this because he is the most peace-loving, great team player and everything. But just let's say, so I punched him in the face, and then I realized, wow, I really do this. And so I apologized to him. Maybe Eric would stand there. Maybe I actually hit him and smacked her. <laughs> She's just trying to defend him. But I apologized to both of them, and I said, I am so sorry. And maybe I actually, when I punched him, I actually cut open my... I, I hit his teeth, and I, maybe I actually scraped open my knuckles. Can you picture that? So now I've asked for forgiveness from him and Erica, and I've asked for forgiveness from God. Am I forgiven? If I really am sincere, I, if I'm sincere, I'm forgiven. And if he forgives me, hopefully he would forgive me. Would you forgive me, Erica? But would his jaw still hurt? Would there still be repercussions because of my sin? So the repercussions of the sin continue on even after forgiveness sets in. It might take me a while for my knuckles to heal. It might take him a while for him to eat. And every time he eats, he actually could be chewing and then remember as his jaws healing up, he remembered, I can't be broken. Now I'm forgiven and he's forgiven me, but still there are repercussions. And so what we need to understand is that even though you say, okay, well I'm going to go through this because there's forgiveness, repercussions are still 